When the former student, Father Javi Alpasa, asked me to share a few ideas with you this afternoon, I couldn't find it in my heart to say no. And I thought of to start off by sharing this experience. A few months ago, uh, sometime in November, I was uh, walking on the corridor and uh, a student accosted me. Uh, he wasn't my student in class and just out of the blue asked me, Sir, what do I do with my life? And uh, that caught me by surprise. Uh, I am, not a, I am neither seer nor prophet, but uh, I said, well, let's talk about it in my office. <clears throat> and I thought what I would like to share with you this afternoon is really an extended version of what I would have wanted to tell him. Because I think there are many among us, even this afternoon, who, who still don't know what to do with their lives. And I think that's perfectly normal. I think that's perfectly okay. But Maybe it's a good starting point. And this is what I would have liked to, to tell him, and this is what I would like to share with you now. Maybe three or four stories. The first story is all about a Chinese philosopher. His name is often translated in English as Confucius. And he said something like this. He was asked, how does one learn to govern a nation? How does one learn to govern a state? How does one learn how to rule? And Confucius did something like this. To learn how to govern a nation, you have to learn how to govern your household. To handle a nation, you have to learn how to handle your family, your friends. But in order to learn how to handle your family, your friends, to govern your household, you first have to learn how to govern yourself, how to handle yourself. In other words, to start small, but to start really. In other words, to start with oneself. This isn't anything particularly Chinese. I think the Greeks also talked about this. Socrates talked about what he called the care for the soul. In order to care for others, you have to learn how to care for oneself. In other words, to cultivate character, to build the nation, one has to learn how to build oneself, to build one's character, to grow. The nation means to learn how to grow oneself in virtue, in depth, in interiority. And very often, when we ask ourselves, how am I going to contribute to building the nation? And when we think of the nation, when we think of the whole country, the scale can, can frighten us. It's, it's just too big. I'm just a small drop uh, of water in the ocean. I'm, I'm just a small ripple. Very often when we hear that what we need is scale, we have to do things big. We have to do things in a super way, in a mega way in an awesome way. But life is not always like that. Life is often small, ordinary, everyday. And so I'd like to think that what's important, first of all, is not so much scale. It's not so much the map. It's not so much data. What's important, first of all, is to start really, to start where we are, even though where we are will always be limited, will always be small. But I think it's also important, even if we start small, not to remain there, not just to remain within our comfort zones, not to remain with what's familiar. We have to do things small, but we have to learn to dream big. Which brings me to another story story about a wise man walking around the, uh, the roads of Europe and he came across a group, three people, who were working over a pile of stones. And he asked the first guy, what are you doing? And he said, I'm cutting stones. They were all doing the same thing. The first guy says, I'm cutting stones. And he asked the second guy, what are you doing? 
And he said, I'm putting up a wall. And he asked the third guy, what are you doing? And he said, I'm building a cathedral. They were all doing the same things, cutting stones. But the first one just saw that, I'm just cutting stones. The second one saw something beyond, I'm putting up a wall, a little bigger. But the third, he was the one that dreamt, he was the one that saw big, I'm building a cathedral. And I think that's also important. It's important to start small, but it's important also to dream big. In other words, to put our small activities, to put the humble, daily, everyday work in the context of a grand vision, in the context of the bigger picture, in the context of perhaps the biggest picture possible. The second story has to do with another Chinese thinker who goes by the name of Mencius. And Mencius tells this story about a farmer who, who planted rice. Okay. Planting rice is never fun, but planted rice. And he was so eager to see the rice grow. And every day he was going back to the fields, and he couldn't see the growth. Every day he was going back, and still, it was just too slow. Until finally he got so impatient that he pulled the rice stalk, and of course it died. Act small, dream big, but all of this takes time. The real growth, building a nation, raising a family, creating communities, all these things take time. They take a long time. They take a whole lifetime. And we shouldn't get too impatient. I know that for many of the young ones among you, you're used to instant things, instant coffee, instant electricity, instant sinigang, instant friends. But the things which are real, the things which depth, the things which are more within, they take time. They take a long time. And when we force, when we force them, when we force things, we destroy. And so I think part of building the nation is a sense of this will take time. This will take a long time. This might even take a whole lifetime. But what's important is that my big dream, my small action, will be precisely that, a humble contribution in time to something that may last forever. Which brings me to my third story, which also is about a Chinese thinker, Chuang Tzu. And Chuang Tzu tells this story of a wheel maker. And one day, the wheel maker was in the emperor's presence, and he saw the emperor reading. And he asked the emperor, what are you reading? And he said, I'm reading a book of history, which tells about the great deeds of our ancestors. And the wheel maker said, that's probably worthless. And so the emperor told him, tell me under pain of death why you consider this worthless. And so the wheel maker tells the emperor, you know, I'm a wheel maker. I make wheels. I make good wheels. And right now, because I'm old, I'm trying to teach my son how to make wheels. I try to teach him the right size, the right tightness. But somehow, when I've said everything that I can say, the most important I have not yet said. And so, the things that are written in the history books, the things that you're reading right now in the annals, the great deeds of our ancestors, that's important. But the most important still 
has not been said, cannot be said. The most important cannot be said. What we know always surpasses what we can say. And what we desire, what we can commit ourselves to, always surpasses what we know. Just as we cannot measure the extent of our knowledge by the extent of what we can say, so also we cannot measure, we cannot limit the extent of our commitments simply to what we can know. We can do more than what we can know. We can commit ourselves to more that, than what we can know. We can desire more than what we can know. That's why we can say forever. That's why we can promise until death. That's why we can mean for always, even though I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And I think that's very important. Dream big, start small, all of this is time, and the most important still cannot be said. I mentioned three Chinese thinkers. I'd like to conclude with a Spaniard. A 16th century Spanish poet and mystic by the name of Juan de la Cruz once said, En la tarde de la vida te examinarán en el amor. In the evening of your life, you will be examined, you will be judged on love. And I think this is what we're trying to reflect on this afternoon. We're going to share experiences, different fields, technology, education, information technology, and everyday experiences. But at the end of everything, at the end of this day, at the end of this week, at the end of our lives, there's only one thing that matters. We will be judged on love. We'll be examined on how we have given ourselves. We will be examined on how we have received others in our lives. And still, after all that I have said, the most important cannot be said. Maraming salamat. Magandang hapon sa inyong lahat.